Hello everyone. Welcome to our video series Test Manager Connect under Skill RPI YouTube channel. So, in the previous video, we have seen the introduction to UiPath Test Manager Connect and what are the different key concepts we have in the UiPath Test Manager Connect. And in this video, we are going to look at how we can create the repositories and the models. So, under the repositories, once we will click on this repositories and then we need to click on this new repository connection and the repository connection is nothing but establishing a connection between your UiPath test manager and the test manager connect and also between the UiPath test manager connect, connect to your target application. So initially we will be taking Azure DevOps as an example for us how we can build the entire integration to flow the artifacts between the Azure DevOps and the UiPath test manager connect. So first we will create a repository connection for UiPath test manager from the test manager connect. So once we click on the new integration, we need to select the product which we want to have and establish the connection. So I'll be selecting UiPath test manager and I'll be giving the name UiPath test manager and the URL, we need to copy the URL of UiPath test manager. So I'll be opening my test manager and here is my URL till underscore we need to copy, copy this and then we'll be putting this here. And in terms of authentication, we will be going with OAuth 2.0 because uh, in UiPath admin center, we need to create an external application and that allows our OAuth 2. So click on add application and I'll give the name of UiPath test manager connect. UiPath test manager connect app. So I'll be keeping it as a confidential and add scopes. Under the scopes, we need to select because we want to authenticate or integrate with test manager. So we need to select the product of test manager and under this, we need to provide the application scopes. And in this application scopes, we can select the specific fields which we want to have the directional flow, flow into the test manager connect, which fields we want to have like either read access or write access. Let us assume that if we are dealing with only requirements, so tm.projects.read, we need to have a projects read access, write access is not required. And in terms of requirements, we need to have a requirements and requirements read and write as well because requirements we want to return back from Azure DevOps to the test manager as well. So in the similar way, whatever the artifacts we are dealing with in order to flow from one application to the other application or the test manager to have an access to this application. So we will be selecting it. But here I'm just selecting each and every uh, uh, permission. But when we are building it in an enterprise, so we need to be specific which artifacts you want to have a read access and which artifacts you want to have a write access. So we need to choose them properly before we create this application. Click on save and click on add. So once it is added, it will give us the client ID and client secret. App ID and app secret are nothing but client ID and client secret. So we'll copy the client ID and we'll put it in the client ID section and we'll copy the secret and we will update it here and click on save. So in case if your details are not correct, it will throw an error. It will not establish the connection. If the authentication is successful, then only it will succeed it will go for a successful and we will see that like done and also this button to be changed to the done. And what other we have like this connection we can enable or disable at any point of time and we can just simply uh, disable the connection at some sometime after some time. So we can put all these details here in case if we want to uh, schedule your connection to be disabled after one month because let us assume that like with one specific uh, um, environment like you want to disable this and again you want an admin to be reviewed and enable it in order to <coughs> provide the entire access lifetime access right so if we are keeping it bang it will be enabled all the time so my connection is established for the uipath test manager so now i'll click on done so my repository is got created for uipath test manager now we are good to read all the details and write all the details to the uipath test manager project if you see with the, our existing uh, whatever the out of the box connectors we have, which are about to be uh, deprecated. If you see here, we have the connection string here and it will be a project specific. But here we are connecting at the organization level 
because of that like we have created an application at the org level and we configured our connection here in the uipath test manager connect so the previous existing out of the box integrations are project specific and it's not at the organization level for every project you need to create but here it is at the organization level so we will be creating only one time for one organization in case of your test manager is like not from the development tenant if it is from a different tenant then again we need to configure a new connection because the your url is changing and your test manager instance itself is changing because of the different tenancy so now we are done with the integration setting the integration between or connecting or establishing the authentication between the ui path test manager connect and test manager now we need to build a repository connection for azure devops so click on azure new uh, repository connection and select azure devops server and here i'll be giving azure devops and the url i'll be copying it from here so this is my organization this is also works at the organization level it should not be till that azure.com it should be at the organization name so you can create a new organization when you have multiple organizations here so you need to copy the url till the org, org level and we will give the url here and now so we can keep all the other fields not man, non mandatory fields as an empty but in case if you have a specific configuration needs to be done from your infra side or for some security reasons you can change these things and here the authentication i'll change it to the personal access token so i'll how i can create the personal access token is under the issue devops we just need to click on this this is the user settings under the user settings we have personal access token and now here we can generate a new token the name is i'll give as ui path test manager connect ui path test manager connect and here we can set the expiration after how many days we want this to be expired so in azure like whatever the access tokens we are creating even for uh, azure apps whatever the apps we are building right like it will have an expiration date and we can change it to uh, required dates and in terms of application access similar to what we have seen in ui path test manager here also we can give a specific access like right uh, work items i need both read and write and manage and uh, for build and code it is not required because we are integrating only in terms of test artifacts so release is not required and test management is required and these are not required uh, packaging is not required release is not required build is not required code is not required we need to have work items and test management only these two accesses we are required but for now i'm just giving only full access and in terms of enterprise we always needs to define the custom defined up accesses only and the scope should be restricted to work items and test management so now i'm creating and now i got the personal access token so i'll copy this and i'll be putting in this personal access token and click on save see all the other settings for the connections are same at like uh, for any other uh, integrations only except the uh, urls and access authentication type we just need to take care when we are integrating with any of the target applications from the test manager connect so my my connection is successful so i got the done button so i'll be clicking on this now we could able to establish the authentication between the microsoft azure devops server and the uipath test manager as well and now we are good to go and create our collections and do the integrations and in terms of models now we need to take care of the models before we jump into the creation of collections so out by by default out of the box already some models are defined and these models you already have some artifact and it's a common name for all the all the fields whatever we have and features feature or epic which is part of our azure devops uh, work items requirement which is part of our ui bath test manager so it's not like we have the naming convention in that way but all these actually gives the same type of uh, definition like task story requirement epic all these are of almost similar so we need to select this model when we are creating a collection in case let us assume that you have ui path uh, test manager requirements and for requirements if you select the requirement artifact from the microsoft azure devops for the epic though you have an epic model here you need to still select the requirement because your end model should be 
the same for both the artifacts where you want to build an integration between or else the integration will not happen because the mapping between the UiPath test manager and the ALM application in this case it's Azure DevOps so that actually needs to be mapped to the fields of this particular model if I open epic so I have formatted ID summary description severity all these details right so we need to map same fields from the Azure DevOps to this fields and from the test manager to these fields and then only we can build the integration to flow the artifacts and so we have different different uh, by default already have and we can even modify the existing also in case if I want to delete I can delete one field and I can add one more field so this can be done from our UiPath test manager model test manager connect model so I'm coming back to the model. So instead of using the existing artifacts, right? Or existing models, whatever is already created, I want to create my own custom model. So there is an advantage and disadvantage of that as well. In case if I'm going with existing or out of the box models, right? Your summary is a mandatory field for me, right? And let us assume if I go to the test case, your summary is not mandatory. So there might be a possibility that sometimes we may miss out to map the mandatory fields in order to create the details, right? In order to map the things, it will not give us the warnings. But when you have similar names and all these things, it is always confusing for us in order to select some model. But in case if it is uh, possible, we can go with a specific model for the item. But what I prefer to do is I will create a specific model for in perfect like whatever the application integration I'm having. So now in my case, the integration is going to happen between the test manager and Azure DevOps. So I want to build a model which will be specific to that particular integration. Whenever I'm creating a collection for any of the artifacts, I will select only that model all the time so that it will be easier for me uh, while I'm building an integration between these two products, uh, these two applications in terms of any of the artifacts. So now we need to create a model in order to create a new model, click on new model. And here we will be providing all of our details what we want to have. Details are nothing but the property or fields of each of the artifact in their applications, right? So we need to map between these two applications. And what is this smart field and label and type and how it works? See type is the data type or you can say type of uh, the value we may need to pass in. Right. And the smart field, a smart field is nothing but like it will be the type of a field where in most of the applications it is common. So this how the smart field will help us is in terms of when we are creating a collection, it will auto map the values field values so that it will be easier for us in terms of mapping and it, some amount of work will be reduced for us and the label is the display name we can say what we can see when we are opening the model or like when we are building the collection so all these things we will see going further when we are creating the collections but for now we will focus on how we will be creating the model here and just need to understand what actually the smart field is and why we actually trying to give that. See, there is an option to give none and there is an option to give a specific value as well. So if I go to summary, summary will be required for me and automatically the label name also comes for you when you select something. You can keep it as a stage or you can change it as well and it, the type is string. So if I need a URL, right, formatted ID, the key of whatever the artifacts we are creating, it will have an ID, so that formatted ID. So I can keep uh, location which is nothing but the URL. So, so there are some predefined fields which we can have and this uh, to and fro also we can do like we can move up or we can move down. So we can do all these things. So I'm clicking on see. Okay, I need to give the name. So what I will give the name is test manager ADO model. Click on save. So my model is got created and I want to have more and more fields here instead of like having only these fields. So I will provide the list of fields which are required in order to build our integration for all the artifacts at one go and then 
we will uh, configure them. We can easily configure them without coming back to the model. So here is my Azure DevOps integration. All the artifacts or uh, model names or field names I already created as a table. So I'll be using this table and I'll be sharing as part of our description as well. Uh, this file location will be shared with you for the description as well. And here are the different fields I have. Summary I have already created. Formatted ID I have already created. Description I need to create. So I'll be adding one more and I'll select description. And by default, whatever the label is coming, I'll just keep it as it is. And I will follow only this label. And if you are following this my playlist, in order to get the perfect naming, can follow the same naming convention what I am using so that it will be easy for you when you are going for the building of the collections or building the integrations. Okay. Now I have got the formatted ID created and now I need to go for the created, modified. I'll go for created, modified. See these fields looks to be like not required because whenever it is got created somewhere, right? So we may not take these values, but still we are keeping it because we will see like how we can put a conditions in order to flow the data from one application to the other application on different criteria also. So we can have a condition in place between flowing of the data from one application to the other application based on any of the fields, whatever we have. So we are creating all these values and location we have already created and we need to create a test case and its type is none. None and I'll give the name as test cases. So I should be removing the space. Oh, yeah, I am getting this error. Okay, I'll copy in this way. Maybe it's some additional spaces or something is coming. Test cases. We'll go for the next. Let me click on save and see if this is no, it's not a error. Okay. Now we created test cases and now we need to create a parent artifact. So parent, what is parent? See, when we are working with any test management tool, we will be having test cases and test sets. So your test set is going to be your parent for your test case. So for such reasons, we will be considering this. So I'm consider I'll be creating this parent artifact. Parent artifact. So I'll just change it to parent. And I'll go here parents. So maybe your test case can be assigned to multiple test sets, right? So in such scenarios, we will be using this name. So parents, so I'll go and create none. And I'll just take it. And here, this should be type of relationships. Because it's related to some other artifact in the test, test uh, manager or test somewhere. So test coverage, test coverage is also part of relationships. So we'll be adding relationships. And so I'll be changing it to relationship because your test coverage is relating to your test cases, executions, test case executions. So that relation also needs to be pushed and we will create this test manager ID, test manager URL. All these are none and strings. And Azure DevOps ID. Area path. Iteration path. We will see how this iteration path or area path will work when we are building our <laughs> collection for work items or requirements. It Azure DevOps URL. So I completed building my model. So I'm not marking anything as a requirement, required field. So that's where I'm saying like uh, the advantage, disadvantage of having this model is that like we cannot mark any field as a required field because in case if we are saying that it is a required field, we need to map that for sure. So that's the reason for which we are not going into or, or marking anything as a required. So now we'll click on done and my new model is created TM underscore ADO underscore model. So this model we are going to use for going further in our videos in order to build our collections and the integrations. 
So instead of having all the other, because some fields uh, are, might be required or some fields might not be required in other cases, right? Like instead of avoiding such a confusion based on the names and all. So I have created a specific model intended for only the UI path test manager and Azure DevOps integration. So now we have created, established the connections between the UI path test manager and test manager connect. Also the Azure DevOps and the test manager connect. And also we have created a model to reuse uh, as part of our collections. And in the next video, we will build a collection and we will flow the data between UI path test manager and the Azure DevOps for the requirements and the work items. So we will see how the integration can happen in the next video. Hope you like this video. Please like, share, subscribe to Skill RPA and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.